Um, I'm going to take what Giselle left us with, uh, keep things human. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to run with it because I think it's a fantastic mantra for us all to kind of keep in mind. Um, I'm going to talk tonight about the consumerization of the workplace um, and how we as people leaders can learn from the world of the consumer um, and what opportunities there are for us to really harness technology um, to everyone's advantage. So let's start here. Technology is an enabler. We've talked about this already. Technology is a fantastic tool. Um, if we use it correctly, so there are smart uses of technology and there are really kind of not so smart uses of technology. Um, it's up to us as humans to decide how we're going to use tech. Um, so sometimes it feels like the tech is in control of us. That isn't the case. We're in control of the tech and we always need to remember that even as um, every day feels more and more overwhelming um, as, mo as more and more technological change kind of comes um, at us. So let's remember that. Um, let's also remember tech is not a new thing. Um, since the 1890s and, and probably before, as the HR world has evolved, technology has always been there to help, uh, to help the HR world evolve. Um, from the time clock onwards, and probably lots of things before that, um, technology has enabled us uh, as humans and as uh, HR people to evolve. Um, so if that's true, um, if, if tech really is as smart as we are, um, and it's not a new thing, then I think we need to ask ourselves a different kind of question. And that question is, what kind of people leaders do we want to be? Um, what you see here is two ends of a spectrum. Um, and uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we all probably do a little bit of both of these. Um, but it's kind of the old world of HR as a support function, a transactional thing. Um, and then on the right-hand side, kind of uh, people more than HR. Um, uh, we're at the strategic at the top table, um, and we matter because we're leading the businesses. Um, the people we work with at Sage, they tend to spend more of their time on the right-hand side. Um, and I think it's really important that uh, we kind of think about why that is and, and who, who do we want to be as people leaders. Um, and, and we think that the uh, tech-enabled people leader is someone who thinks about not technology versus humans and not even technology plus humans, but humans to the power of tech, right? So humans made exponentially more powerful thanks to technology. And um, Giselle touched on this. There are uh, lots of things we can learn from the world of the consumer. Um, with, I think we're, we're catching up in the HR world. Um, I'm going to focus on three of them today. The first one is this idea of essentializing. And, and what that means, it, it means doing fewer things, but doing them better. Um, in who, I'm going to do a quick vote. Who here, show of hands, has a banking app on their smartphone? OK, all right. It's fantastic, good. Um, that worked. So years ago, that wasn't the case. And even kind of five, 10 years ago, we had to go to, into a bank branch just to do the simplest of things. And what banks did, which was, which was very smart, was to automate as much as they could and to shift the onus onto us, so self, to make it about self-service. Um, how do we do that in the people world? Um, think about how you manage PTO. So what, what, we, we, what almost every company does is automate the, the, the process of time off and shift the uh, onus onto the employee to kind of serve themselves. That's a really easy and obvious example. Um, I, my question to all of you is, when you look at your to-do list tomorrow morning or tonight, um, what on that list can be automated by tech, which, which you shouldn't be spending time on today? Um, and what can you shift onto your people so that they're doing the work and you don't have to do it? Why does that make us more human? It makes us more human because it frees up our time to focus on the things that really matter, things that tech can't solve for us. So um, those really big kind of intellectual challenges that only humans can solve. And it also gets us out from behind our desk to actually spend time with people and have conversations with people. So that's the first one. The second one is this idea of personalization at scale. Um, I love Nike ID. It's kind of not a, not a new example, but I think it's a really powerful one. 
Um, here we have Jen Rose, who has created for herself a unique pair of sneakers, and I think they're pretty, they're pretty sweet. Um, and, and Nike enables people to do that hundreds of thousands of times every year. So, so they're enabling personalization, but doing it at this massive, massive scale. Um, so how can we do that in the workplace? How can we do that for our people? Think about online learning. Um, the way that companies like Linda, Coursera, Udemy, they've kind of flipped the classroom experience. And instead of the teacher being in, in control, the student is in control. So how do we do that more for our people? How do we kind of put them in control, enable them to have personalized experiences? at scale. Um, and why would we want to do this? We'd want to do this because it will enable us as humans um, leading lots of other humans to reach more people in a more meaningful way. So it's that kind of elusive quality and quantity both at the same time. Third and final, um, measuring impact. Um, this shouldn't need saying, but I, I think it does. Um, in the world of, con of the consumer, which is all of us when we're not in the office, uh, fitness and health tracking is a, is a really good example. Um, so I, I trained to run my first marathon last year. I'm nowhere near as um, elite as Enrique is. Um, and, and I took my Garmin out with me wherever I went because it helped me keep track of my training and my progress and how well um, I was kind of doing on, on my training program. I'm not going to pretend that measurement and metrics are, are new to the world of um, business. But I think where there's a big gap is proving value. So uh, we all measure lots of things. Arguably, we measure too much. Um, but how are we actually kind of doing, going the final mile and showing the impact of the work we're doing? And there's a huge opportunity for us as people leaders, and actually, I think, an obligation to show the value that we're having. If we want a seat at the top table, if we want to lead our businesses, we have to show the difference that we're making. There's a ton of research out there that shows how investing in people flows through to the bottom line and has a huge impact on profitability. Um, so it's not good enough to say that we can't measure the impact of what we're doing. Um, in L&D, CEOs say the number one thing they want to see is, is um, is impact, business impact. Only 8% of CEOs today say that they see that. So 92% of a lot of our bosses are not seeing the, the number one thing they want to see from HR spend. Why that's good and that, why that makes us better um, as human leaders is what's good for people is good for business. So it, it kicks off this amazing chain reaction um, and a virtuous upwards cycle. So I'm going to leave you with this. Three things. Um, essentialize. Do less, but do it better. Um, number two, personalize at, at scale. Create unique experiences for all of your people. And number three, measure impact. Tie your people leadership to profitability. And, and the final thought is, again, tech by itself is just a tool. What will make tech exponentially more powerful is all of us. Thank you.